a very good morning or good evening to everybody so today we are here to discuss a very basic concept of pathology of breast right so <clears throat> what is it so what is breast breast is specifically a modified skin appendage which is functional in females during lactation but rudimentary in the males it is comprised of an epithelial and a stromal component so this is what we see is the uh, ducts and we have the myoepithelial cells and there is a lumen here this is the normal breast what you have here is the myoepithelial cells and the luminal cells and the myoepithelial cells are being highlighted here and these are the ductal cells so these are the common disorders of breast we have congenital conditions such as aplasia of the breast seen in turner syndrome juvenile hypertrophy we also have inflammatory conditions such as rheumatic fat and necrosis ductectasia discharge sinus fibrocystic disease of the breast commonly presenting as painful lumps then we have the neoplasms we have the benign condition fibrodinoma and the malignant condition carcinoma next what are the non neoplastic diseases the non neoplastic disease commonly are acute mastitis mammary ductectasia fat necrosis and fibrocystic changes what is mammary ductectasia it is ducts of the breast get dilated and filled with inspissated secretions having periductal interstitial and chronic inflammatory changes seen in the fourth to second decades of seventh decades of life clinically the patient presents with nipple discharge retraction of the nipple due to fibrous scarring the lesion may be mistaken for carcinoma of breast you have the duct and surrounding fibrosis with inflammatory cell infiltrate so grossly this condition appears as a single poorly defined indurated area on cut surface you have dilated ducts containing cc inspissated secretions histologically on the microscopy what you find are dilated ducts with granular amorphous pink debris and periductal and interstitial chronic inflammatory cell infiltrate surrounding that you have a lot of inflammation at this magnification also you can find the blue blue areas these are the inflammatory cells coming to the different types of breast lumps so around 40% are fibrocystic change and yeah and you have around 10 7% as carcinomas right 10% as carcinomas all right and 7% are fibroadenomas coming to fibrocystic disease it's also called as fibroadenosis fibrocystic change and what you have is the commonest lump is seen in around 10 to 50% of women it could be because of hormonal changes and clinically the patient presents with periodic discomfort and pain and there are certain conditions we say as fibrocystic change epithelial ductal hyperplasia adenosis fibrosis apocrine metaplasia these are all common changes in fibrocystic change you have irregular palpable lumps mimicking a this thing so what do we find here we find here that uh it's a bluish discoloration translucent blue color having serous hemorrhagic fluid ranging from microcysts to 6 cm and what is it here what do you find here you have cysts lined by flattened epithelium with apocrine metaplasia what is apocrine metaplasia snouting snouts like cells are coming out with secretions they are all histological terms and stroma shows lymphocytic infiltrate so fibrocystic change we can also have proliferative type there is a lot of cell multiplication like fibrocystic change with epithelial hyperplasia sclerosing adenosis fibrocystic change with atp
it is important to remember that fibrocystic change per se is not a pre-malignant condition, right? So you have your this duct. What is the feature to say it is benign? One thing is it is irregular spaces. You can see this is small, this is large, small, large. So each duct you have to see if they are irregularly shaped. That is the feature of benignity. However, if you find a uniform cookie cutter pattern, then it can indicate a DCIS. You can just call irregular shaped, irregular shaped, right? This is another condition in fibrocystic change called sclerosing adenosis. Lot of sclerosis and adenosis. What's the meaning of this term adenosis? Increase in the number of SNI. It's called adenosis. SNI means the small, small, small glands are there, no? These are all increased. That is adenosis. Sclerosing means a lot of fibrosis around them. Right? So this is a textbook picture of fibrocystic change, having dilated ducts, fibrous truma, apocrine metaplasia. Some common conditions like a small duct papilloma. What is that? It is a, within the duct, you will have a small lesion in the papillary or finger-like fashion, right? Comprised of fibrovascular cores, with lined by two cell layer. We have an intraductal papilloma here and multiple papillae with fibrovascular core attached to a ductal wall. The cells are benign. And all these are the list of benign conditions. Most common is a fibroadenoma seen in the third decade, also called as the mouse in the breast. Why is it called a mouse in the breast? Because it has a characteristic feeling of slipping away. You try to Feel it, it will go here, there, here, there, as if it's a mouse in the breast. Rounded, mobile, painless lump, no scarring, no calcification, slit like gland of the fibrous tumor. This is a classical appearance of a circumscribed lesion, white, firm, with slit like spaces. Fibrodenoma is comprised of two components, glandular and stromal component. And the glandular component has two patterns, pericanalicular and intracanalicular pattern okay and pericanalicate dilated ducts intracanalicate compressed ducts basically there's a stromal proliferation accompanied by epithelial cell proliferation fibrotinum is completely benign another tumor we have got is the lotus tumor it's a fibroepithelial neoplasm tends to recur locally if not completely excised most are benign but 50 percent cases are 15 percent cases are malignant it can metastasize, right? So pilots is a category which has a benign borderline and malignant tumor, right? And it's a stromal tumor. If it becomes malignant, it's called a sarcoma because it's a stromal tumor. It will, as a sarcoma, it will spread through the blood route. It metastasizes hematogenously. So it's a large tumor. Pilots means leaf-like pattern. Oval, bosselated, less fully encapsulated by fibrotinoma, cut surface gray white cystic areas with areas of hemorrhage, necrosis, and degeneration. So you have a hypercellular stroma with proliferation of benign ductal cells. The histological criteria used to distinguish are benign, borderline malignant are the frequency of mitosis, cellular atypia, cellularity, and infiltrative margins. This is a fibrotinoma. Look at the cellularity is less, right? And this is a malignant pilot. What do you find here? Cellularity is very high. If I compare this to this, cellularity is less here, definitely more. You have some mitotic figures and some nuclear pleomorphism. All these are features of a malignant pilot tumor. Now coming to breast carcinoma. So I am this overline, the overall presentation theme is that I'm going very basic, right? There are a lot of in-depth things to be taught about each topic, but that's not the scope of this topic or this uh, lecture I have planned. I'm just giving a broad overview. Coming to breast carcinoma, 20% of all cancers in women, commonest cause of death in, is around 35 to 50, in the 35 to 55 years age group. In UK, in UK, one in 10 to 12 have a chance of having this carcinoma. And one in eight women in the US, less incidence in Asia. I think I beg to differ with the PPT. I think there are a lot of cases nowadays happening of breast cancer in the 
in the Indian population as well. So this was, uh, yeah. So probably the information may not be accurate right now, but the incidence has increased, right? Because what I have taken is from Western literature textbooks. But in the Indian scenario also, we are nowadays finding a lot of cases of breast cancer. Very rare before the age of 25. And then we have risk factors like age, obesity, high fat diet, maternal relative with breast cancer. A lot of genetic things are there, right? BRCA1 mutation, BRCA2 mutations, longer reproductive span, nulli parity, oral contraceptives, later age at first pregnancy, risk factors, atypical epithelial hyperplasia, previous breast cancer, endometrial carcinoma, right? BRCA1, BRCA2. Okay. So what is the, these are the etiology of breast cancer. Clinical features, you will have a lump and these lumps are hard. They are, you know, they can be soft as well. They can have inflammation. They are fixed. By definition, the word cancer came in when they examined the sclerosis carcinoma breast. It had that crab like projections, you know. So, this is the classical feeling of a cancer. And they can be skin retraction, nipple retraction. How do you diagnose? It's very important by mammography, by ultrasound, by fine needle aspiration cytology, by biopsy. Core biopsy, excision biopsy, frozen section, IHC, yeah, and cytochemistry. That's a separate topic altogether, right? It's just a basic video. And which are the non invasive cancers? We have the ductal carcinoma in C2 and the lobular carcinoma in C2, right? So, this is the what you find here is DIC. Ductal carcinoma in C2, the, again, another carcinoma in C2. What you find here is the uniform pattern, I told you, right? The uniform pattern of cookie cutter pattern is seen here. This is the cribriform pattern of DIC, the pattern of DIC. So these are the different patterns of DCIS. DCIS has solid, common to papillary, cribriform, uniform pattern. And then you have the histologic types. Infiltrating duct carcinoma, lobular carcinoma, medullary carcinoma. This is a, uh, medullary carcinoma is no longer considered a separate type of cancer. It is now considered as a variant of IDC breast, right? You have to remember that. Carcinoma, skin retraction. Look at this another case of carcinoma breast, dermal edema. Carcinoma of breast, ADC breast, you have here infiltrative patterns of tubular and ductal cells. All of them are there. This is infiltrating lobular pattern. Here, the cells are in the India file pattern, single cells, right? Targetoid pattern, infiltrating lobular pattern. So two most common types of breast are IDC and ILC, infiltrating ductal carcinoma and infiltrating lobular carcinoma. Medullary carcinoma was formerly regarded as a separate entity. Now it is called as invasive breast cancer of no special type medullary. It's a very recent update. But many pathologists may still not be aware of it. So it's important to know that. In infiltrating carcinoma of breast or invasive carcinoma of breast with fibrosis, Lymphatic spread, the nipple can sometimes get involved by the IDC or the breast cancer, giving a POD orange, like a rim orange skin, you know, that kind of appearance, POD orange. Paget's disease of nipple is another condition important to know. It can have present as eczema of the breast, nipple, and associated with the invasive ductal carcinoma of the breast. A small word about ER, PR, it's a big topic again. I may plan another video on it. So ER, PR, and HER2 new are very important nowadays. Whenever you diagnose a cancer of breast, you have to go for these immunohistochemistry markers. All right. And you have the HER2 marker as well. It is important because it's a drug called Herceptin, which can work on the HER2 markers. So, what you find here is ER receptor positivity in the nuclei. You have to follow the ALRED scoring for that. 
upper right and PR as well. Her two new is a membrane positivity, a nice chocolate membrane positivity, chocolate brown color. And then you have the staging of breast cancers clinically. You have stage one tumors, two centimeters or less in diameter, stage two, two centimeters more in diameter, stage three, a five centimeters of diameter in tumors of more than five centimeters diameter with regional involvement on the same side. We use greater than five centimeters with supraclavicular infraclavicular lymph node involvement. Stage four is with tumors of any soils without with or without regional spread, but with distant metastasis becomes stage four. Right? So these are all the favorable prognosis, poor prognosis of the tumors, histologic type, tumor size, Nottingham grading. You should do a new diagnosis of breast cancer, accidentally node status, lymphatic and extravascular invasion, other features like you know, tumor subscription, inflammatory reaction, stromal elastosis, IDC, skin involvement. And ERPR is most important. Then you go for mitotic index by GI6701. Uh, then you can go for angiogenesis by VEGA, CD31, CD34. And then do the other things like BRC1 status, BRC2 status, P53. Molecular changes becoming a big field altogether, right? Yeah. So that's the end of the presentation. It was a very broad overview. There are a lot of things happening in it, right? Fine. Thank you for your listening to this presentation. Thank you.